So rumor has it that Ash Ketchum might make a comeback in the new Pokemon Horizons anime. While he may not be the main focus, there's still hope that we'll see him in action once again. So in preparation for his potential return, I put together a brand new Pokemon team that is tailor-made for the Paldea region. No more wandering around like Pokemon Journeys, this team is all about Ash's time in Paldea. So on that note, let's break down Ash's new Pokemon team. To make sure I have all my bases covered for Ash, I'm putting together two different teams. One that follows the traditional route we've seen in the past single region series, like X and Y and Diamond and Pearl. And another team that is more flexible and based on my personal choices for him, something more akin to Pokemon Journeys. But both teams will share some similarities. Now for Ash's teams, of course they start with Pikachu, as of course it's his ace and his most reliable Pokemon. For those wondering, it won't get any new moves or anything because this moveset is already versatile and pretty complete as is. And don't worry, we're going to be sure to cover all the terror types for all of the Pokemon in just a bit. Now the first real new Pokemon is something that Ash needs, and that's a starter Pokemon. As in Pokemon Journeys, he didn't get one. So of course, the best choice is none other than Fuecoco. Within Paldea, it's hands down the starter that would be the most akin to Ash. It already gives off so much Gibble and Totodile energy, it can play an early comedic role while being one of Ash's powerhouses. Also, Fuecoco helps with the two early gems in the region, being Katie and Brassius. Of course, in time it would turn into a Crocodile and then later a Skelly Dirge. Now, of course, this is pretty certain because Ash always evolves his fire starters. Plus, since Pokemon Journeys, we're kind of past the days of him not evolving his Pokemon to their final stage. So this Pokemon gives Ash a fiery powerhouse and adds another unique typing onto his team. Plus, it gives him another ghost type since we only have Gengar. And of course, Skelly Dirge might be the best Paldea starter and possibly one of the best starters we've had in a long time. Now next up on the team is Low Kicks. This is easily one of the most Ash type Pokemon in all of Paldea. Between its sleek design and mode changes, it's perfect. I can see Ash catching it early on as a nimble right before or just after he goes to Katie's gym. Plus, Ash hasn't caught a bug Pokemon since Levani, so it's long overdue. Due to Nimble's size and nature, I can see it and Ash going on a training art and evolving it into a low kicks to become even stronger. Maybe in the process it even battles against a shiny low kicks because it's just one of the best shinies in the region. Not to mention it can help it really shine into its brand new showdown mode, which is something I would love to see in the anime. So a Pokemon with a unique typing, dope design, and so much potential makes Low Kicks a perfect member for any Ash team. Now next up we have Kilowattril. Now I can already hear it, Ash doesn't catch any other electric Pokemon besides Pikachu. So first I have to say, I don't care, this is my list. Plus it's also been 26 years, maybe it's time for a change, just let me tell you why. Now Ash traditionally tries to catch every main early bird Pokemon for every region, except for Sun and Moon and of course Pokemon Journeys. But in Paldea, where he's back in a single region where it's not slice of life, I think this young spunky Pokemon, Watchful, would be a perfect fit. I mean it could be even something close in personality to Taylor, but of course having its own little thing. Plus we haven't seen Ash with a two stage bird in such a long time, or even a regional bird in a while, so why not add it to the team? As it evolves into Kilowattra, it becomes only stronger, being Ash's main flyer. As in every journey, Ash always has one Pokemon that can either fly to scout, pop Team Rocket's balloons, or a Pokemon he can fly on. And we all know that this Pokemon can do all three because it's huge, it's fast, and it's a bird. When it comes to its electric typing, it doesn't have to have a moveset around the typing. As Ash Pokemon like Gliscor, which doesn't have any stab moves, is still a fan favorite. I think for Kilowattro, it just bases moveset around flying and then maybe give it one electric type move that Pikachu doesn't own. Because there is Pokemon like Naganadel which uses Thunderbolt which is Pikachu's signature move. Kilowattro can learn so many good options like Dual Wing Beat, Brave Bird, Air Slash and then give it Discharge as another option. Out of all the flyers in the region, I think this is the best one at least catered for this team. Now next up is a staple for Ash's teams in the recent years, being a dragon Pokemon, and I think that Bax Calibur makes the cut. Now as a fridge of Bax, this Pokemon is ugly, but it could be a fun Pokemon to give Ash as an egg because he's never had a pseudo legendary as an egg before. This could almost pay tribute to Tyranitar he would have had if he kept Larvitar. 
as of course it would evolve into an Artabax and really come into its own, learning more about battling, becoming stronger, and all that jazz. As one thing we haven't seen Ash do in the anime is actually have a pseudo-legendary in his middle stage for a proper amount of time. Most of the time it's very short-lived, like with Sligu turning into Gudra after only 4 episodes. Then of course it becomes Bax Calibur, an absolute beast. And again, for the last couple generations, Ash has been adding more and more dragons onto his team. Those like Gudra, Noivern, Dragonite, and Dracovish. So it'd be nice to see a fully fleshed out and powerful pseudo legendary on Ash's team. Uh, plus, Ash's only other ice type is Glalie, and it's not the strongest Pokemon. So Bax Calibur is another perfect fit. Now, the last Pokemon for this team is going to be Quaquaval. Now, I can already hear it in the comments about this dancing flamboyant bird that everyone tends to not like. Though it is different, it is actually possibly a perfect fit for Ash's team just to spice it up a little bit. As a Quaxley, it could be a late bloomer to the team, mainly spending time in its first stage and getting stronger, sort of like a Squirtle or an Oshawa. But of course, by noticing other dancing Pokemon and people, it'll eventually want to push itself to evolve into a Quaxwell. From here, this is where I see Ash stepping in to help it train hard and come up with a battle style that works with its passion of dance. Now we've kind of seen something like this before with Halucha, as it has its own unique flair with the whole wrestling motif, so the same thing could apply here but with dancing. Not to mention with moves like Area Lace, Aqua Jet, Aqua Step which can enhance the speed and we know Ash Ketchum loves a speedy Mon, this is just a perfect fit. Also I think this really works because Ash has never had a proper fire and water combo starter on any team, as he usually has all three starters like Encanto, Johto, and Unova. 2 like in Dominant Pearl and Sun and Moon, or the very rare 1 starter Pokemon like in XY. But he's never done a combo of a fully evolved fire and water starter before. This easily could become one of Ash's most deadliest starter pairings and making it a dope member for Ash's team. Now in my opinion, I think this team overall is actually pretty solid and it hits on all the major tropes of Ash's teams and things he likes in the past. And of course, as far as the terror types go, it'd be Pikachu with Electric, Skelly Dirge with Fire, Low Kicks with Bug, Kilowattro with Flying, Max Calibur with Dragon, and Quaquaval with Water. But remember, I have another option for you. So here we have Ash's alternative team, which gives us a little bit more freedom like he has in his team with Pokemon Journeys, but we won't be grabbing a whole bunch of old Pokemon. Now of course for this team you'll see that Pikachu and Low Kicks will return like before, but of course we have a new team member and a possible ace Pokemon for this team being Armor Rouge. Now alongside Low Kicks, Charcadet screams Ash Pokemon, as his dex entry literally says a burnt charcoal come to life and becomes a Pokemon. Possessing a fiery fighting spirit, Charcadet will battle even tough opponents. This just sounds like a blend of Ash's Chimchar and Riolu into one Pokemon. Now I can see it as an early capture in Ash's adventure where maybe it notices Ash and Pikachu battling alongside each other and this actually like makes his fiery spirit build up, at which point it makes him more interested in Ash and later wants to go with him to become stronger. Now of course they would train and travel and of course come across a character who may talk about the auspicious armor, which of course will give Charcadet more power and start his evolution. This easily sends Ash and Charcadet on a whole training arc as they defeat tons of Bronzor and get their fragments for the armor, and of course it evolves into Armor Rouge. Now just in case some of you may be wondering, why not Ledge? It's mainly because as dope as this Pokemon is, it's just too edgy for Ash. It would be better off with another character like Nimona or Gita or even a Methio. Besides that, it's like another perfect Lucario, Greninja, or Infernape type Pokemon for Ash's team. So Armor Rouge is a confirmed and for sure team member. Now again, Ash's team always has a flyer of some kind, and when you break down the options in Paldea, we just don't have that much. Now there is some options, but some just don't make sense and some don't fit Ash. And of course, let's not bring back old Pokemon like Talonflame, Staraptor, or Noivern. And of course, the best choice here has to be Bombardier. Now this combo of Dark and Flying isn't one that Ash has used before, but its move pool is quite unique and has a pretty cool ability, which is Rock Payload, which simply gives Ash's Bombardier an added free rock typing without actually having the typing. And it gives it access to moves like Rock Throw, Rock Slide, and the anime's favorite, Stone Edge. But more importantly, it lets this be Ash's main flyer. Not to mention to make this story even more unique, it can be the Titan Bombardier that we faced during the Herba Mystica storyline with Arvin. 
Of course, he would catch it once it's reverted back to normal and not as a Titan because that would just be too much. And then from there, it makes it a perfect pick. Not to mention, it can play into his dark typing with his personality, making it way more interesting than Ash's Pidgeot or Unpheasant at the bare minimum. So Bombardier, welcome to the team. Now next up for Ash's team has to be Palafin. This is another solid addition to Ash's team. A powerful water type Pokemon that draws inspiration from superheroes, it seems like a no brainer. Though I do think it's still weird to have Pokemon like this on land because they are solely based on animals in water, but the anime and the games don't work the same. Because of course in the game, Finizen and Palafin just float in the air. Unlike in the anime, we have examples of Misty's Goldeen which just flops around. But I possibly imagine it'd be more of a situation like how Sfeel or Dugong is handled once it's on land. But of course, none of that matters once it steps into its hero form. This thing becomes absolutely cracked and becomes just a versatile team member for how powerful it can be. This easily becomes one of Ash's main powerhouse for this team and possibly for the future. And of course, it adds another reliable Pokemon for Ash to pivot into if needed. So Palafin is just perfect. For Ash's last Paldea Pokemon, it has to go to Satitan. Now honestly, I don't like this Pokemon. Its design still throws me off a bit, but I cannot knock its serious bulk and attack power. Ash can grab this Pokemon in between heading over to Rhyme or Grusha's Gym. As if you remember, right before Grusha's Gym battle, there is a cute little Satato on the battlefield, and that right there can be the one that he catches and adds onto his team. Over time, it would become a Satitan. Again, this works for a couple different reasons. First, Ash hasn't had an Ice type since Glalie, which I didn't mention before, and again, this is long overdue. And the last Pokemon to have such bulk to this caliber has been Snorlax, and that is a long time ago. Plus, it's cool to see Ash with Pokemon that are a little bit different. Not to mention, it could possibly have one of the best personalities, being a blend of Ash's Snorlax, maybe Bayleaf if it's a girl, and also Dracovish all into one Pokemon which could add some super unique and funny moments to the battles if they win either by crushing Ash or even hugging it to death. And to me, this is making it a really vital tanker for this Ash team. Now quickly for these Pokemon Terra types, we have Pikachu and Low Kick staying the exact same with Electric and Bug, but Armor Rouge with Fire, Bombardier with Flying, Palafin with Water, and Satitan with Ice. Now, I think both teams are really solid. The first team brings back those standard Ash tropes from multiple starters, a dragon Pokemon, and a traditional bird. But on the other hand, the team creates a ragtag of popular and some possible unpopular Pokemon, and it just fits together actually really well offensively and defensively. Not to mention, I can see so much personality in the second team. Again, I can see Ash with either team, and if he does come back in the anime, I don't really care what he has, I just hope that he shows it off. Well, there you have it, two full Ash Paldea teams. Again, let me know what you think in the comments down below about either team or both. And then also, I'm kind of curious, what would you create for Ash's team? Or what would you add or take away from what I've created here? Again, let me know in the comments down below. Also, hit the subscribe button for more content like this and other Pokemon content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching, and uh, bye!